afternoon all. Now look at this. This is an audio sampler, which my friend Brett, Brett, hello, and I uh, designed and built. Well, back in the eighties, I guess it was, based on a Z80. There's the Z80 chip with its EEPROM and 64K of dynamic RAM, which would store about three seconds of sound. Now there's a keyboard and display chip here, and there's a lovely old um, seven segment display. We'll switch it on in a moment. Uh, it's also got MIDI, so there's a, a UART running at the MIDI frequency, which I think is 31 kilohertz. 31 and a bit kilohertz, yeah. 31 point something or other kilohertz. There's some plus and minus 12 volts with two regulators there. And then there's a big, beefy 5-volt uh, power supply here for the digital, the 7805 in a big old TO3 can. So let's power it up. So let's switch on. Here's the master switch. And it's terribly noisy. We've got lots of hum. We've got some really weird, what's that? The new thing, aliasing or heterodynes, I think they call it, aren't they? So there we go, Ace eighty-seven point one. So would that have been nineteen eighty-seven? Yeah, just the first version of software. Ah, version one software. Okay, so now I guess we have to do a recording. Actually, there are through modes, aren't there? Should we try the through mode? So now, what, play the keyboard. And then you can pitch transpose, can't you? Yeah, you've got to do a recording first, though. Can you not pitch transpose live? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm sure you can. Is it trans? Yeah, so if you play the keyboard, I'll transpose. It's a live pitch transpose. And the way that worked is that there are two pointers. One is writing to memory uh, at one speed, and then the read pointer is reading at a different speed. And what would happen is one would overtake the other, which is where you get sort of horrible discontinuities there was no clever uh, software to eliminate that. So, can we do a recording? Right, okay. If you put it into record. Uh, right, now we need to hit the keyboard immediately after pressing record, don't we? Play. Excellent. And then uh, we can pitch transpose the recording, can't we? Yeah, you put it into through first, yeah. and then up out over here. Mm. Oh yeah. Ah, and, and shift, Goes shift up. arrow is octaves, is it? Octave, yeah. Ah, okay. Now what if you want to play repeat, repeatedly? Uh, there's a repeat function here. So select repeat and then play. Okay. Until you press stop. Yep, got you. So now what about this delay mode? Right. Um, press delay, press the keyboard. Actually, I, I need to see your hand on the keyboard, otherwise it doesn't make sense. So it's just playing the input. Yeah, delayed by half a second. So that Dell 050 is half a second. And then we can mix the amount of uh, output and input. So if I mix this while you play. So that's lots of input, not much output. And that's lots of output, not much input. And halfway. 
Hmm. So you've recorded uh, a sample in there. Yep, just uh, an arpeggio. And then you've got a reverse thing, haven't you? Shift, play. Oh, yeah. Can you repeat that? Yep. Shift, repeat, play. Shame about all this noise and um, rather, yeah. and the microphone socket doesn't work, does it? No, not at the moment, no. We've got a microphone here, but we just can't make the microphone socket work, which is a real shame because the voice samples are much more impressive than the keyboard samples, aren't they? Yeah. Now you can see the chips that were expensive because they're the ones in the socket. So the Z80 is in a socket. The EEPROM's obviously in a socket because we would have been changing the code. We've put the RAM chips in sockets. Uh, I guess they were expensive back the time, in the day. Yeah. And then this thing is the DAC. There's a DAC. In fact, they're both DACs, aren't they? It's a DAC uh, 78, is it? DAC 78, yeah. And they're military spec. They're in ceramic. Yeah, packages. that's right. They are in ceramic. And this was a COM DAC, so it was a compounding and compressing DAC. So it's not linear. And uh, that's ideal for audio, isn't it? Yeah. And then the, the, the one here on the input side is a DAC with this AM2502 successive approximation register. And that work, those two work together as an ADC. So this is analog to digital, the DAC and the SAR. And then on the other side, you've just got the DAC uh, on the output side. Oh, and the other thing on the input side, of course, is sample and hold. So this is an LF351 uh, sample and hold uh, chip with its capacitor there, I guess it is. Yep. Now we found a folder with some of the original uh, design sheets in it. So these are what tracing paper overlays. Yeah. This is how it used to be done in the old days. Yeah. Uh, there's the tracks on one side of the piece. Oh, okay, there. so that's one side. And this is the component layout, just oh, so yeah. that we could uh, see what went where. Yeah. Got you. And then this. Is a work of art, hand drawn and cut and paste with literally bits of um, graph paper. paper, literally stuck onto other bits of graph paper. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, and then underneath this is the oh, that's right. Yeah, they were printed out on the electronic uh, suit. Yeah, wow, that's amazing, isn't it? Which actually look quite impressive. We do. So that's it. That's the uh, homemade sampler. And we put a lot of uh, effort into the, well, you put most of it in, into the software to have all these features, you know, uh, live pitch transmission, delays and reverse and all that sort of stuff. But the most of the circuitry came from uh, a couple of magazine articles, wasn't it? ETI's Pitch Transposer, I think it was. Uh, and I seem to remember Maplin did something uh, with these DACs, some sort of uh, pitch transposer project. I can't remember. It was so long ago. Yeah, it was a long time ago. I definitely know ETI did it, but I've been online and I can't find anything uh, on those projects. So they've been consigned to history. <laughs>